qualifying for the Dutch Grand Prix is over and once again it is pole position for Max Verstappen. But this was one of the craziest qualifying sessions of the year as we got to see a wet to dry day of qualifying with a lot of variation in track conditions from the start of Q1 until the end of Q3 when the circuit finally dried out and today I am going to be doing a data analysis from qualifying. Now let's get into the video. As I mentioned, this was yet another wet to dry qualifying session in 2023 and that meant that we got to see them start Q1 on intermediates and by the end of Q3 the circuit was almost fully dry. This means we saw a lot of circuit evolution and the name of the game was tyre temperature and being on the track at the right time as the circuit was drying out and continuing to improve. And how can we see this circuit evolution? Well, I've brought up all of the lap times of Max Verstappen from the start of qualifying until the end of Q3. As you can see, the trend of the fast laps is that it continues to get faster and faster before, of course, he has to back off and recharge the battery before he wants to go again. Then when the slicks are bolted on for Q3, you can see there is a massive improvement in lap times. Let's now take a look at the fastest lap from Q3 and compare it to the first lap of Q1 to see how Max was able to go faster. What we can see when we look at the first real lap from Q1, well the first thing we see is that as we approach what are typically the very fast high speed banked corners, Max has to go significantly slower in the wet when compared to the dry. In general, the trend of the speed is similar, just at a lower speed. But at these higher speed corners, the amount Max has to back off is far more significant than compared to a lot of the other corners. And this is because it is far more difficult to load the tyres up and have grip in these bank corners in the wet versus in the dry, when they can be almost flat out at certain points. The amount of time found between these two laps is 12 seconds. And when you look at the telemetry, you can see exactly where Max is able to make up the majority of the 12 seconds. Max Verstappen's pole lap was a 110.567 and was actually only 0.2 seconds slower than last year, despite the fact last year's qualifying was fully dry, and this shows to me the rate of development in F1. The cars are getting significantly faster and the rate of development is hot, even for Red Bull who are a long way out in front. The man on pole position may have not been a huge surprise given how brilliant Max Verstappen has been all year, but one team that has surprised me pretty much all weekend is Williams. In my practice data analysis video, I mentioned that I was surprised Williams were actually performing as strongly as they were, given the circuit is not typically one that would suit their car, given it is a high downfall circuit. And I was worried that they may struggle if qualifying was wet, but if anything, Williams were stronger in the wet conditions when compared to the dry, and if it was wet, we genuinely could have seen Alex Albon challenging for pole position. But even so, both Albon and Logan Sargent had an excellent day, as Albon is lining up 4th on the grid, and Logan Sargent is 10th. Logan will be disappointed to have hit the wall, because it was possible that he could have seen both Williams in the top 6. Let's now compare the laps of Alex Albon in the Williams to Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari, to see how Albon was able to beat the Spanish driver. One thing that stands out to me is that Sainz was significantly faster than Albon in a straight line, which is not something that we are used to. Williams are typically low downforce and low drag, but this weekend they have cranked on the downforce and sacrificed straight line performance. However, on the break, Sainz has to slow down more than Albon, and because of this, Sainz loses out the advantage that he has over Albon in a straight line. And it is all of these big stops where the Ferrari just seem to struggle all weekend long, even in the practice sessions, as both Leclerc and Sainz were struggling to stop the car, and this was the same even in qualifying. For Alex Albon, this is a brilliant opportunity to score points in the Williams and move themselves clearly into 7th place in the Constructors. However, the race is long and we have seen Williams struggle off the line. With the race likely being wet at the start, there is a chance for a rolling start and this rolling start could be the saving grace for Williams if it is actually wet, but certainly points are a possibility for them. I just want to say if you are enjoying the video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe button for more F1 content. I just passed 3k subs and the next goal is the big 5k. Now, let's get back to the video and let's talk about McLaren. For McLaren, today was a bit of a missed opportunity. 
Going into the session, there was a real feeling that McLaren could score pole position, and at some point in qualifying, it was looking like we could potentially have a McLaren front row lockout. But instead of a front row, we have Norris in second place, and Oscar Piastri is saddle of him, way down in P8. But how did this happen? Well, for Lando, we will look where he lost out later when compared to Max, but for now, let's compare the two to see where Piastri lost out. For Oscar, he loses out almost immediately into Turn 1. Through most of the sections, Oscar is slowing down versus Norris a lot more, as Norris can carry more speed in general through a lot of the corners. Lando is much more at home, but shortly, when we compare Max and Lando, you will see where he lost out on pole position. For Ferrari, qualifying for the Dutch Grand Prix was almost a massive missed opportunity, as Charles Leclerc was almost out in Q1, due to a strategical error by the team. But even so, Leclerc is in P9 and signs his P6. Qualifying has not been a strong day for the Scuderia. Leclerc crashed in qualifying end in his session early, and Sainz has been out-qualified by Williams. The team, for some reason, have not been able to maximise their car, as they were struggling a lot with locking up and generally having a balance issue. Going into the race, Ferrari need to try and keep their nose clean, but I have a feeling it could be a very difficult race for Ferrari. For Aston Martin, at least for Fernando Alonso, it was a good solid day of qualifying as the Spaniard finds himself in P5 on the grid. But let's compare the times of Sainz to Alonso to see where the differences were. Once again, it is a return to form for Aston Martin, and you can see they have very low straight line speed, but they have very good downforce. Alonso gets onto the power much sooner and much more aggressively than the Ferrari driver can, but Ferrari are much faster in a straight line. Alonso though is very strong through the slow chicane section of the circuit, and ultimately if the race is wet, which seems pretty likely, then Aston Martin could be in a very good position for some strong points and maybe even a podium if the race is chaotic. For Mercedes, qualifying was a bit of a mixed bag. In my preview and predictions, I said how it will be a close fight between McLaren and Mercedes, but it will be between Norris and Hamilton. However, it looks more likely that it will be between Norris and Russell, as Hamilton was eliminated in Q2, and George Russell is lining up third on the grid alongside Norris. So let's take a look at Russell and Norris to see where George just lost out against the McLaren. It was really right at the beginning of the lap where Russell lost out, as Lando carried a lot more speed through Turn 1, but also going into Turn 9, which is the fast downhill right-hander, it's where it ultimately all comes undone for Russell, as he slows down way more than Norris, and this is where he loses out on a front row start. But for Russell, he can be happy that this was his best qualifying position since the Australian Grand Prix all the way back towards the beginning of the season. And finally for Red Bull, it is another pole position for Max Verstappen. And if the race is in normal conditions, which is somewhat unlikely, he will comfortably win the Grand Prix, given how strong the Red Bull is over a race stint. But he nearly didn't get pole position. And in the first sector, he was slower than Lando Norris. But as the lap continues, you can see where Verstappen was frankly more committed than any other driver through this section here, as Lando was faster than everybody but Verstappen. This white line shows exactly where Verstappen pretty much won qualifying due to his commitment. And this is what secured him pole position. And going into the race, it will be interesting to see if anyone can fight Max if the race is as wet as it potentially could be, as rain is very much due now for the Dutch Grand Prix. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.